been thinking a lot about that video with Josh Donaldson on his approach to hitting, and I can't help but think that some of what he was trying to say got lost in translation. First of all, most of us didn't get the whole picture. There's a famous line in the video where Donaldson says, so If you're 10 years old and your coach says, get on top of the ball, tell him no. And, you know, I saw this clip get shared around a lot online, but the video release was actually an edited version. There was actually a longer version that had more context with what he was trying to say, and this leads me to my first point. A lot of good and bad advice gets clumped together because of the semantics of words. Hitting is an art just as much as it is a science. Here's a great example. King Griffey and Harold Reynolds talking hitting the kid, the prince, the phenom. He's sharing his secrets to success. Notice how some of his talking points run counter to modern hitting philosophies. Look at his hands right here. He's mimicking getting on top of the baseball. This is a little bit different to Josh Donaldson's breakdown. You can actually see the movement in a lot of his swings. He's heavy on driving down through the zone. The rotation of his hips levels out the swing. It's how he stays on the plane of the pitch long and often. It's almost as if he's pulling down on a rope that's attached to a bell. He's aggressive on the pull down. How Griffey communicates his feel versus real is different to today's standards. And here's my next point. Hitting and reaching peak performance at the plate is such a subjective experience. It's not surprising that there are so many different takes. You can do a deep dive on YouTube and you'll get two different legends explaining the same thing in two different ways. Swing like this, right? And you even see big leaguers sometimes doing that. Listen, here's the biggest thing, putting that elbow in the slot and working uphill and this is how you get launch angle. I want to be through the zone here, so if I'm late, I still want to hit a, a line drive to right field. If I'm still early, I want to hit a line drive to left field, but it's all about the plane, you know what I mean? You want to be through the zone early in order for you to stay in there and be able to hit line drives all over the place. And on another day, you'll get two different hitting takes that completely contradict each other. So the next thing is you, you want to stay on top of the ball. Okay. Um, so like the high tee. So if you're 10 years old and your coach says get on top of the ball, Tell them no. It's a challenge to explain feel for what is real. Which is why great hitting coaches are such a rare breed. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of good ones. But if they haven't touched it, felt it, or lived the art of failing with the bat in their hands, it's hard to communicate it. Sometimes the best hitting coaches are the ones who have never played a lick of big league or pro ball, but were nonetheless obsessed with the art of hitting. Let's talk concepts. Getting on top of the baseball. We hear get on top or work the barrel above the baseball, and some hear chop down on the baseball. In many ways, as hitters, we can feel the concept of chopping down on the ball and still execute a mechanically sound swing. It doesn't mean you're actually chopping down on the ball. When the hips clear, the bat path levels out. Again, feel versus real. Words are words, how we communicate them matters. Instead of adopting a hitting philosophy like it's gospel, or assuming that an approach is wrong, we simply need to continue asking questions. Never afraid of being wrong or sounding stupid. The goal here is to encourage critical thinking. When everyone is thinking alike, no one is thinking at all. What's my point? Just because everybody's hitting a certain way doesn't mean you should too. It's important to keep an open mind, but not so open your brain falls out. In other words, do your own research and question everything. Hitting trends versus hitting principles. We saw the evolution of the slight upswing with Ted Williams as a player and a coach. We saw the disciples of Charlie Lau with a more linear style in the swing. Part of his MO was driving down straight to point of contact, getting on top of the baseball. If you look at hitters like Don Mattingly, Wade Box, George Brett, you really saw just how different swings were in the 80s and the early 90s. Hitters looked more stiff. Many of them had close setups in the box. They were hinged at the hip during the batting stance. Hard contact, getting the bunt down, moving base runners over, execution, specialty hitting, small ball, that was an important part of the game back then. And now we have the era of measuring production, slugging percentage, OPS, war, and various other key performance indicators that are designed to predict the future value success and performance of a current prospect. The long ball, extra base hits, RBIs, that's what sells today, and I get it. As they say, numbers don't lie. Bunting, singles, stealing bases over the course of a season may not be as valuable as slugging percentage, but I think there's one thing they're not factoring in. What happens when the pitcher or the opponent makes an adjustment?
What are we seeing on how to attack the guys who do that exaggerated swing? One year from now, Brian Kenny, you're going to have a feast <laughs> trying to come up with the statistics that, that are going to talk a lot about pitching high in the strike zone mm. and how often they use the, the, the either pitches that are high or, or cutters away uh, to, to, to contradict what they do with the launch angle. And I, I'll tell you what, one thing that they have in common, all three that we just mentioned out there, all three have in common the fact that they have a hole on the upper part of the plate and inner part of the plate. Strikeout percentages have increased each year for the past three years. Since 2017, there have been more strikeouts and pop flies than at any point in the history of the game. 2017, 2018, 2019, each had 40,000 plus strikeouts, almost double than 40 years ago. In my opinion, hitters are having trouble with the elevated fastball because their swings are primed for the pitch down in the zone. In my opinion, I believe it's because of the ethos of the launch angle and the culture of trying to hit the ball as far as you can. Hitters now have a hole in their swing. In my opinion, if you can't hit the ball consistently to all parts of the field and be a really tough out with two strikes, you're just a dressed up out. So here's my take. What message are we sending young hitters who aren't even built to hit for power? Can you even imagine if David Eckstein, Dustin Pejoria, Tony Gwynn, Ichiro Suzuki were taught at a young age how to hit for power by incorporating a lift in their swing? That would make no sense. It's not that I'm not a fan of the launch angle. I think measuring it has tremendous value simply because what gets measured gets managed. And that's always a good thing. My issue is this. I'm not seeing a lot of young hitters learning or being taught how to handle the pitch up in the zone when really this is where they should be doing their most damage at the plate. Some of the furthest balls hit will be the chest high fastball or breaking ball. Ever since the pitcher is nine years old, they're taught to keep the ball down. Why? Because the ball up in the zone is the easiest pitch to hit when the hitter is geared up and ready to attack the next pitch. That's why it's called a mistake pitch. When we're teaching hitters to get on path with the plane of the pitch by fostering an early collapse, we're engraving a hole in their swing. Again, in my opinion. This is a hill I'm prepared to die on. A good swing has three planes. The pitch down, the pitch at the belt, and the pitch at the letters. The higher the pitch, the less of a hinge, the flatter the path of the bat. The lower the pitch, the more of a hinge and collapse with the back side, the less flat the path of the bat. I believe this is the missing puzzle piece for a lot of young hitters. The ability to be aggressive and attack pitches up in the zone. From here, they can post up and then adjust down the same way elite hitters look away and then adjust in. Now the hitter has the discipline to lay off the breaking ball in the dirt because they're sitting on something up in the zone. This is hitting IQ, and it's the way hitters are going to have to adjust to pitchers who are also making adjustments. Baseball is a game of adjustments. Hitting trends change from decade to decade, but hitting principles will never change. Hitting the ball to all fields, keeping the head still, a nice load and separation, a control and aggressive swing, balance that point of contact, the bat head staying on the plane of the pitch long and often. In the year 2080, when the umpires are robots, draft picks are being chosen through AI algorithms, hitting tactics will still evolve, but hitting principles will stay the same. Ultimately, this is just my opinion. I am still and always will be a student of the game.